So for the next little while, I'll be taking video requests and doing very specific topics. So if you guys have any requests, leave them in the comments. And if anyone makes a suggestion that you like, then leave a thumbs up so I'll know. The PLL parity algorithm I use goes like this. So first we'll look at the cases where the corners are solved. And you know this PLL parity when one side looks like a certain algorithm, in this case H perm, and the other side looks like a different one, in this case U perm. So first off, I'll run through the cases that are easier. This one's just PLL parity. If you have an adjacent swap and the others are solved, then you just put them on the front right to R U R prime U prime, and then PLL parity, and then put this pair back in. So if you see three pieces that are not opposite edges, so what that means is like blue and red are not opposite colors and so on and so on, then the last one will also not be. So what you can do in a case like this is just do Z perm from any angle. And then you're left with PLL parity. Now moving on to the more interesting case where you have opposites and adjacent edges. So how to handle all of these cases is we're gonna use a formula in our minds to translate all of these into regular U-perms. So if the front is opposite edges, then you can treat it like it's solved. So that's like this sort of U-perm. So if we imagine that this one is solved, this is opposite, this is adjacent, then the U-perm goes like this. And then we're just left with PLL parity. Now, if the front is adjacent, then you look at this and you just pretend that this is a normal U-perm, even though if you look at a normal U-perm, it doesn't look quite the same, but just keep in mind where that opposite edge is, and if that's how you recognize U-perms, then this should be pretty easy to recognize. You just do the normal U-perm from here, and then you're left with PLL parity. Now if you have diagonal corner swap, or in other words, you don't have corner headlights that match. So of the diagonal corner swap algorithms, the best one is Y-perm. So as much as possible, you want to force Y-perms. So for example, if you see two adjacent bars and you know you have PLL parity, then Doing the parity algorithm first from that angle gives you V-perm, which is not very good, and doing it from over here gives you Y-perm, which is good. However, all that can be avoided just by putting the two bars at the front right and doing a Y-perm, and you will be left with PLL parity. Now, if you get diagonal corner swap with no bars, then there are two possible cases for this one. This one is actually an E-perm with these two and these two swap, and these edges also swap this way, or a really similar looking case where the edges swap this way, but the corners this time swap this way. So I don't personally use the algorithms for this one, so I'll put them in the description. But how you can recognize the difference is this one, if you look at the middle four, it makes a checker pattern. And this one, if you look at the middle four, it does not. So what I personally do is I don't really care what case it is. I just do an E-perm from any angle. And then that leaves you with PLL parity. So here it is on the other case, just choose a random angle. And then that's PLL parity. Lastly, there's the case with just two corners that need a swap. And in this case, if you start with PLL parity, you'll always end up with N perm. So the best thing to do actually is to hold it like it's a Y perm, start the Y perm, do the first half. So you end off with having this OLL. And then before finishing off the OLL, just do U or U prime so that you're holding it vertically, do PLL parity, and then finish off that last OLL. Now for the adjacent corner swap cases where there are headlights like this. These are the hardest ones to do because there are so many different cases and you have to memorize all of them. Well, you have to memorize them eventually, but if you just want a starting point, here's what you should look out for. So if you want to quickly recognize whether or not there's PLL parity, then you have to be really good at two-side PLL recognition, but then also look at a third side. So what I mean is like this. For this, if I see a checker pattern here followed by a block, I know that this is supposed to be an A perm with the block over here. So here's what I mean. We have two of the same case, and this one is supposed to be an A-perm. So what I usually do is two-side recognize PLL from one angle, and then look at another angle and see if that matches what I thought it was. From this angle, it looks like a G-perm, and from this angle, it looks like an A-perm, so there must be PLL parity. Now, if you don't immediately have a plan for how to solve this case, then the best course of action is to do PLL parity first, and always try to maintain as many blocks as possible. So if we see a block right here, then we don't want to do PLL parity this way, because that will break it. So we do PLL parity from this angle. And then afterwards, just recognize what you have. However, if you're more advanced and want to be optimal with doing this, then that's not always the best method. So in this case, for example, we have this block here, this block here, and you're going to break one of them either way. So we're going to see what happens if we break it this way and we have a G-perm. So here's the case again, and we're gonna try and break it the other way. And now we have an R-perm, which R-perm could be good, but it, depending on which R-perm you get, it could be really bad, because one of the R-perms is not that good. But what's better than R-perm and G-perm is J-perm, which is not a biased statement. That is actually true. So the best way to solve this case is to do a J-perm from this angle first. And that leaves you with PLL parity, although it's kind of impossible to recognize that that would have happened. So that's where memorization comes in. 
Now there's no better advice I can give for that than to just memorize the cases and memorize what you're supposed to do. So this is something you should do by yourself because it depends on what cases you're good at recognizing and from which angles, and then what algorithms you're good at doing. So if you wanna learn this to get you guys started, here is this particular R perm, and I'm gonna do PLL parity from right here to set up a case. And so this case is a little bit tricky to recognize because there are no blocks anywhere. But the question we'll try to answer is what are the options that we have here? And we always have four options for adjacent corner swap PLLs. So the first two options are the easiest ones to find. Do PLL parity from this angle, see what you get. It's an R perm. Then try PLL parity from the other angle. And we're left with a G perm. So clearly this one is worse. And our first option of doing PLL parity from this angle is the best one. Next, the harder ones to find is what PLLs leave you with PLL parity. So here I just start trying the adjacent swap PLLs, but in a way so that the corners end up being solved. So for example, I know that if there was a block here, this A perm preserves these headlights. And this doesn't leave me with regular PLL parity, so this is not good. Another option I have is T perm, and that doesn't work either. So as it turns out, the PLLs that work for this one are R perm from this angle, And because this R perm is faster than the other R perm, then this is actually the best option so far. And the last option is U2 into this G perm, which obviously doing a G perm is not very good. In any PLL parity case, you should not have to do a G perm if you are choosing the best option. So I'm gonna announce something here that is not going to be ready when I'm releasing this video, but when it's ready, you'll find the link in the description, and that's a 4x4 PLL parity trainer. Honestly, I would not be able to work on anything besides just like uploading videos to my channel, and I would not be able to put nearly as much time as I do now into my videos if it weren't for my awesome patrons on Patreon. So if you like to support Cuban content like this with a monthly pledge, then I'd really appreciate it. And there's also rewards such as uh, the most interesting one is for $10, you can get your solves critiqued, not in video form necessarily, but I'll give you tips that are specific to you on how you can improve immediately.